Revolutionary greetings, my fellow Amazonians, and best of luck in 2020, the year in which we strongly believe we will move into our promised land. I launched today a new program called Right to Know the Truth. The main objective of this program is to clarify innuendos that distract our focus on our goal to liberate our people and take our destiny into our own hands. I begin this series, ladies and gentlemen, with the very first question. Is President Sisiko Ayoktabi ruling from jail? The big answer is no. It makes absolutely no sense, given the Herculean constraints that anyone will be faced when you are in in communicable detention or in detention in the enemy's camp. This narrative was fabricated by those that deliberately intended to mislead gullible Amazonians. And if you were one of those that believed this lie, I'd like to explain to you why this lie was manufactured, that President Sisiko Ayoktabe is ruling from jail. They are four main reasons why the lie. The first reason, when the president came out of incommunicable detention, we were all very excited, but the president realized, following report from different structures of our movement, that the then leader was misleading the struggle and we were losing. We were really, really losing. There was a strong need for the struggle to be repositioned. For anybody who knows the president, his immediate objective was how can I empower SACO to be better so that we could get back the revolution on track. And there of course were a series of meetings that happened between SACO's government leaders in detention, leaders of the Restoration Council, the ASC, and leaders of the House of County Reps. And from those meetings, there were two main objectives the president was driving. One was that the APNC that was created by the civil society to unite our struggle and make proposals to strengthen IG institutions supported by the House of Counter Reps and SACO's cabinet do not run parallel conferences. The president insisted in meetings that they must go and merge these conferences, choose one thing either in the US or in, 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 in Europe, choose one set of dates and come out united. We had two meetings from uh, the SACO cabinet, his vice, his then vice president, uh, Abongwa, chaired, and I led the APNC delegation. And to anybody who was in that meeting, we could tell you that the cabinet had not conceived uh, a theme of the conference, a venue, and so on. They were not prepared. And on our side, everything had been done, but we were willing to work with the cabinet. SACO's cabinet was not interested in unity, and that fell flat. These are facts. They cannot be contested. The second thing is the president had said that ABC pays about $12,500 a month on TVBs and so does CBC. These two must merge together and form one broadcasting corporation, one voice for our people. Chris Anwar's then communication secretary was not interested. What immediately happened after that was Sako announcing the 73 man cabinet, and we were all shocked. Do take note that by this time, Cometa Evis had said if Sako does not go, the revolution is gone. Prof Prophet Daniel of the House of Counterfeit had said the same thing. The ASC, every structure had said Sako has to go. Fellow countrymen, when Sako said the president cannot instruct him because he was appointed, do take note. When you acting, you when you acting for any of you who's been in the corporate world, it means when the person on whose behalf you're acting appears, you disappear. By disappearing, I do not mean that you do not continue working, but you allow that person to give you advice, to give you directions and so on. On the contrary, Sako immediately started running a parallel government. When Scarf noticed the house was burning, they came in. Scarf asked the truth. Let them talk now. Do take note that when it became clear that these guys did not want unity, the president called for a vote. In that vote, 11 out of 18 people in a meeting with Sakwa and Chris Anu voted that everybody should go to the APNC. You all know what happened. They went into blackmail. So let me conclude this. Anybody 
who attacks our leaders in jail, our people in jail, anybody who touches our president, that is a treasonable offense against the revolution, against the Amazonian people. And we assure you that you will pay for it. This is a time for Xmas, it's a time for peace and reconciliation, it's a time for forgiveness. We call on all these guys who have carried out counter-revolutionary counter activities to come out, apologize, let's put the past behind us and focus on the liberation of our people.